ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It is episode 196 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. My name's Dave McRae, coming to you live from the Voice Man Studios in Toronto, Canada. He's Tony Michael in Atlanta, Georgia. And tonight we're talking Scream and Nev Campbell. What does it all mean? Ladies and gentlemen, you've waited a long time to hear it. We are live! We're live, ladies and gentlemen. Live! It is Monday, March the 18th, 2024, 6.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. Woo! All right. We are back. We are back. We are back. Tony, Michael, we're back. How are you doing, sir? I am doing good. My editor just emailed me saying he has a problem with the link. So Ah. bear with me for a minute. And that's the show, everybody. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. (laughs) <laughs> That's okay. You, you 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 take your time doing what you are doing, work folks. Work is work. Work is work, <laughs> folks. Work welcome, work. welcome to episode. You know, what? I'm just gonna turn this. I'm gonna turn up this light over here for a second. It's a little. Uh, hang on one second. Let me just press okay. this up. There we go. Have a little more light on my face. That's a little better. Uh, Folks, welcome to episode 196 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. It's been four months since Tony, Michael, and I. Uh, yes, it's been uh, four months since, since Tony, Michael, and I. Sorry? Crazy. Crazy. No, it is. It is crazy. Uh, Darren Sands in the uh, uh, chat says, uh, looking very crisp and sharp, Dave. Great. Great. Awesome. Uh, Shout out to uh, Darren, of course, of the Slaughtered Lamb Movie Podcast, who uh, a couple of days ago helped me sort of get acquainted with the software Video Ninja, which is what we're using in accordance with OBS instead of Zoom. So I appreciate it, Darren. Thank you very much. It... uh, so far, so good. It was pretty easy to set up, wasn't it, Tony? Yeah, everything looks good. Yeah, looks. I can right. hear you. You can hear I'm me. Not I can hear you. you. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Right? Not yet. Well, if it happens, we know what we need to do. Um, so here we are, episode one hundred and ninety-six. It's been four months, and there's been a lot of news that have that that has come. <laughs> over these four months. Uh, but we wanted to come back with a strong show and we wanted to come back with, you know, obviously, arguably the biggest news of the last few weeks. I mean, you know, you could say the Halloween thing, but really when you break it down and you look at the Halloween news, you know, there's not a lot of meat on the bone there. I think the scream news, there's a little more meat. Uh, so I, I would say that that's probably more interesting. Uh, and that's what we're going to start with. And I know that Nev Campbell is your final girl. Nev Campbell is your girl hell. Yeah. So uh, let's start there. Tony, the fine folks of this channel have not seen you in a long time. I want to start with you uh, and find out your thoughts on this news. Nev Campbell is coming back. Now, obviously, we know that Melissa Barrera, as of right now, anyway, who knows what, I mean, it's, I guess it's not out of the realm of possibility that she could somehow make her way into this new movie. Who knows? But as of right now, she's not in it and we know why. And, um, and I have my thoughts on, on how that's not really kind of a big deal, I think, at the end of the day because I kind of feel like her thing was sounding kind of rare. Anyways, we'll talk about that. But nonetheless, they 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 needed to make some sort of decision to bring back, um, you know, something. I mean, they lost uh, Melissa Barrera because she was, well, there's no, there's no nice way to say it. She was fired. Uh, they've lost... Uh, Jenna Ortega because it coincided with her schedule for Wednesday season two, so she couldn't take part. So they've lost two of the big stars of the recent Scream 5 and Scream 6. They've gone back to the well. Isn't necessarily a bad thing. They've got Nev Campbell. Is Courtney Cox going to come back? Who knows? But they've got Nev Campbell. They have Kevin Williamson who hasn't directed a movie since Teaching Mrs. Tingle. That's Tingle, not Tinkle. 
since 1999. And so he's not exactly an experienced director, um, but he is an experienced writer and, and he's certainly been around directors and on set and been around the business for a long time. So is he the right choice? I don't know, but let's take it one stage at a time. Tony Michael, Nev Campbell is back. Scream 7, how do you feel? What are your thoughts? You told me some thoughts the other day. I liked it. I liked where you were going. Take it away. What was that? My headphones were all screwed up. Oh, so anyway, uh, what I was saying was, uh, oh, wait. Sorry. They were all like tangled up in shit. Oh, were they? Was there a glitch? I thought, I thought I saw... No, there's no glitch. There's no, I basically was saying, oh, well, you know what happens. I basically was saying that, you know, Nev Campbell, right? I mean, she's she's back. Kevin Williamson. Back. How do you feel about this news? How do you feel about this news? Uh, this is, I mean, it's, you know. Take it away. As, take it away. As, as Jamie Lee Curtis is to Halloween, Nev Campbell is to Scream. I mean, mm. this without a doubt is Nev's franchise. Don't get it twisted. Uh, anyone who has come in afterwards is just getting sloppy seconds. Um, you know, but some people feel that the that it now belongs to this new generation, and it's like, well, no, not 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 necessarily true. Um, I think there's a lot that they can do in rewatching. I watched all five. I got through half a six before I was like, this shit sucks, and turned it off. I wasn't a fan of of the last one. It just is whatever. Um, is what it is. Um. So I had to start thinking like, all right, well, what can they do, you know, without going back to the well again and just basically repeating the same shit over and over again. Um, and, um, there's a few options they can do. Obviously the big one is the fan theory one of Stu being still alive. Um, the thing with that is as much as I would love that. And as awesome as that would be to see Matthew uh, Lillard, uh, reprising his role as Stu got to tread carefully with that because he was so good that first time around. You don't want to tarnish that character. You know what I mean? You don't want to, you don't want to bring him back and it's a different version of stew or it's not the stew that we all wanted. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and is, is he going to be in the ghost face costume, you know, most of the time, you know, like, or are we going to see him and his face going to be all messed up? Um, and unfortunately I just don't trust today's writing in movies, uh, the way movies are written and, and, and the arcs that they give these characters. Uh, sometimes it, it's a hit and a lot of times it's a miss. And so I'm kind of on the fence with that, that yes, the fan in me would love to see him and Nev or Sydney, Sue and St uh, Sydney come full circle, have a final showdown. That would be great. But what is it going to do to the legacy of his character? As long as we're not tarnishing it as long as we're not ruining it um because i just wouldn't want it to be him just so that like ooh ah uh, you know what i mean like we're we're, we're creating the you know we're, we're we're creating the hype and we're bringing Stu back and you know this that and other then boom it turns out to be a disaster and it's like well this is not where i want to see his character go so i totally understand like i always say it's got to be properly motivated it's got to make sense got to be proper and then can't the, be the question in. i would be asking is where has Stu been all along you know right, what i mean like right. why has he been mia all this time um, you know, where Scream 4, which is one of my favorite sequels in watching the, the, the franchise here over the last week, um, where they got it right, um, with Neb, uh, with Sydney's cousin and the obsession of her cousin and that, you know, wanting to be famous. Um, that's very relatable, especially with the younger generation. All these kids want to do, they just want to be famous. They don't care how they get famous. They just want likes, they want the clicks, they want, you know, whatever. So that was a very relatable story that they told and made sense. Um, the brother thing that they did in three, never bought into that, uh, is what it is. You know, it's there. You, you, you can't hate on it. Um, Scream 2 is good. You know, I mean, it's Billy's mom and, you know, whatnot. Um, it's a decent sequel to the original. I still, again, I still lean towards Scream 4 and 5 are as, as my two favorite favorite sequels and then after that would be two and then right uh, i guess three and six whatever i mean six again like i said i don't i i if i never watch six again i'm good not uh, to go off on a on a sidetrack but but what is it just you know that you don't like about six i just bored me like i like like my add was kicking in i was just you know 
I got through it with you because we watched it together for the first time. And I we just did. remember that. <laughs> I just remember that night like, oh, this is, this is painful. Like I was just so like, I was just, I didn't even care. You know what I mean? I just did not care. I, I didn't care about the characters and how the characters were written. More of uh, diminishing returns, I guess. You know, I just didn't care because really Scream 5, you know, like if we're, if we're looking at Sydney's character as a whole, as a way of a nice send off, Scream 5 did it right. They, 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 they properly brought in new characters, well-written, great story arcs for each one of them. Melissa's um, Wednesday, I forget her name, um, in the movie, or Jenna Ortega. Tara. Um, and then Tara, thank you. And then the other characters as well, too. All written well, great performances from each of the actors. Um, and then that perfect, you know, ending, you know, will I be okay? You will be. Boom. And that's it. And then it fades off to black and, you know, you ride off into the sunset. That was a great way to pass the torch to someone new, you know, and really yeah. they didn't have to go. They didn't have to do six. It was, it, we know what, you know, we know what that means. We know Sydney's still out there. She's good. Everybody's fine, you know, and you're off doing your own thing. Another thing I didn't like about six is uh, the way Kirby's character was written. I'm not saying she can't be an FBI agent. It was just, I don't know. I just felt like her performance was just like, I think even herself was like, really, I'm an FBI agent. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it didn't even comes across on screen that I, you, she just, she's not, she, she's more convincing when you, when you watch Hayden's performance in four and then you watch it in six, she seems very stiff in six. Whereas in four, she's very relaxed. She's very chill. She's, you know, the horror nerd, you know, she, and, and, and whatnot. That's what I loved about her character. And, and it was so well written. Um, you know, it, yeah. It, and, and, and then the way they wrote her in six, it just, I don't know, it, it didn't land for me. Um, now having said all that, where do you go? What do we do? How do we, you know, like, you know, like, how do we bring this back? Uh, what, you know, what do you do about, you know, circumstances that are going on in real life, you know, uh, you know, behind the scenes with the franchise and whatnot. Um, you know, I think there's a lot, you know, you can do. Did Kevin write four? If I'm not mistaken, I think he wrote four. I, he, I think he wrote one, two and four, maybe. Okay. I think now something like from, that. From my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm almost a hundred percent positive an unfortunately turn of events change where it couldn't happen. But I believe four was a new starting point for a new trilogy that Wes wanted to do. And then unfortunately he passed away, but uh, I'm not sure, but, it, he, but that's possible. I believe he wanted to do another trilogy. I'm almost, I'm almost a hundred percent positive <coughs> that I heard Nev talking about it somewhere in an old, I'd have to look for it, but I'm almost positive. I remember hearing something like that being said that, you know, Wes wanted to do uh, another trilogy uh, with, you know, Sydney's character. So what was this trilogy that he wanted to do? Um, and maybe he talked to Kevin about it, you know, and so maybe Kevin might use some of those ideas that he was going to do with Wes to continue on telling Sydney's story. Because you can keep telling Sydney's story, but it's got to, you know, it's got to make sense. You know what I mean? You can't, I get why she's doing it for you know, two reasons. Payday, obviously. I mean, money's money. Look, let's, let's be real. When someone's throwing six figures at you, I mean, like, oh, you ain't going to turn. I, you, I doubt it's six figures. It's probably well into the sevens. So there you go. Seven yeah. figures. Right. You know what I mean? So like seven figures, you know what I mean? Money's money, right? Yep. So let, let's, let's, let's be real. I mean, uh, but having said that, this also is her bread and butter. You know what I mean? And there's only so many there's only so many movies she's going to be able to do and get away with it and believable. You know what I mean? Before you start getting into like, okay, Nev me, you know, you might've, you, you've gone beyond jumping the, sh you know, the, the sh jumping the shark. So maybe she's got two more in mind. Maybe she's talked with Kevin about this, you know, the idea that whatever Wes originally set out to do in his new trilogy that he wanted to do. Um, and maybe that's what they're going to focus on because you, it's like I told you, I think it was yesterday uh, when I sent you the the text or the voice message. Um, you don't necessarily have to omit uh, Scream 5 or 6. That can still exist in its own, in, in, in the same cinematic universe. You know, Marvel did a really good job, you know, like it or not. I'm not a big comic book guy, but, you know, 
they the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, starting with Iron Man going up to Avengers Endgame, when you watch all the individual solo movies in between, Captain America, Thor, the, the Spider-Mans and all that stuff, they all connect together. One way or another, they connect together seamlessly. So it is very, very possible they can still do the same thing with Scream. They don't have to retcon anything. They don't have to start a new timeline or pick up from where four left off. Um, you know, I agree. Or whatever. You can still keep the events. You don't. You don't have to oversaturate it. You know, Sydney could be sitting there on the television looking at you know shit going on in New York, and and you know, a news. You know, she's watching a news story of you know an, you know another attack on you know the survivors of the recent Woodsboro. Boom, boom, done. That's it. It's connected. You don't have to draw out. You don't have to go into this whole, you know, it's kind of like what they did do in Scream 6, which is, you know, they mentioned Sydney, which they didn't really have to do. But there was that quick dialogue exchange between Gail and what's Melissa's character in the movie? Sam. Sam and Tara, the three of them, they're outside the precinct and they have that quick exchange, you know, talking about Sydney and that's it. So Sydney's presence is somewhat there, but it's not overkill. They can do the same thing here so that, like you said at the start of the stream, Maybe Melissa's not done. Maybe there's, you know, there's something behind closed. We, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We don't know what Spyglass is doing. We don't know, you know, um, you know, if they're talking to her about like, hey, listen, we still want to work this out with you. We still want to continue with your story. In the interim, we're going to do this with Nev. This is a totally separate thing from yours. And you can do that. It's not like you can't do it. You can do it. As long as, again, you're telling a good story at the end of the day. So what would um, be your... Like if you, like what you described to me yesterday, give me a, a, or, you know, let the, the, the viewers and the scream fans out there know what, what, what you told me in, in terms of the direction that you would go. Well, again, the way option a, it would be going the stew route. Um, and really focusing this story on scream, the events of the first scream, right? Stu and Sydney and, and really keeping it tight, you know, not making it a big, big production, almost like the original Halloween, very low budget, you know, very isolated, not too many different locations. Um, and, um, I certainly would pull the trigger on offing Gail at the beginning. I would, that I would. I would go for the pure shock just for the fact that everyone expects Courtney Cox to survive these movies now that I, it, that if it were, if we knew it was Stu, you know what I mean? Like you knew Stu was the killer. That's almost a poetic justice type moment. Like it's coming full circle. Like, okay, Stu got Gail and now he's coming after Sydney. And you could still even bring Kirby into the equation. Um, and she doesn't need to talk about, you know, the, sh the events of six, she can focus on more the events of four, you know, if you wanted to bring her in, I don't think you need her character. I think you can keep her character where she is right now in, in the, um, the time, uh, the, the story with involving Tara and Sam's characters. So, you know, and, but again, if they, if, if they want to load it up, just so like, say like, oh, we're bringing back Hayden, we're bringing back Courtney, we're bringing back Nev, we're bringing back Matt, you know, then I'll, yeah, that's just going to get fans fucking, you know, excited. I mean, and I get it because I'm one of them and I would be excited. Um, but man, you gotta, you gotta treat that so delicately because you can fuck it up in an instant. I have an it, idea of how to do it, which I'll talk about in a second, but, uh, please continue. Yeah, um, you know, and um, he, like I was saying, you just got to be so careful with Stu's character because I don't want to see the legacy of his character ruined. I, I, I would hate that just to service the fans, to put people in the seats and whatnot, you know, and I could see Spyglass doing something like that, like, re you know, reaching for something out of desperation, right? Just to like, you know, we want to excite people. We want to get people back to watch Scream. It's not just about Nev. We're bringing Courtney. We're bringing Matthew Lillard. We're bringing Hayden. I, I, I totally get it. But having said all that, you know, it could be a total shit show. Option B would be, again, it can be an isolated situation. As far as the killer goes, I don't know what you can do at this point that hasn't been done because we did the revenge in part two, which was Billy Loomis's mom. We did the brother angle, which, again, I, I hate, but it is what it is. We did the cousin angle who was jealous and wanted to be like Sydney. 
Great movie, great sequel. Loved every second of that. And now in Scream 6 or Scream 5, when they brought Nev back, it was two kids just trying to recreate what happened in the original. So I, I don't know necessarily where you go or, or what story you can tell. Um, but if you're, if you're bringing her back, and you're not going to do Stu, and you're not going to bring any of the legacy. Well, although you, I still think you should bring at least Courtney Cox, minimally Courtney Cox. Uh, and I, again, I still think she should get it at the beginning of the movie and just shock everybody. I agree. Um, it's the killer that I don't know. If you're not going down the Stu road, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, do you get? Do you, I mean, what is it? Uh, what was her? Um, the boyfriend there in Scream Three, you know, you could, it could be him, but like, why? Why would he flip the script like that? You know, on her. Um, yeah, and and this is part of. Sorry, go ahead. No, go, no, I was just saying, like, I, you know, I don't. I was just gonna say, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I have. Go ahead. I, I was gonna say that I have been on this channel. It's no secret that I have been against the idea of bringing back Matthew Lillard as Stu. And it's not because I don't recognize how powerful that would be for fans in terms of nostalgia, for sure. I mean, you know, you'd get your asses in the seats, everybody would be losing their minds. Um, but I, I just feel that, like you, I don't want it to undermine the ending of the original. And right. I know I know that you didn't see uh, you see his face, and he was he was kind of moving a little bit. Oh, shut up, kind of moving a little bit. He just got, he just got electrocuted, for Christ's sakes. Um, you know, I, I think the intention there, if you were to, you know, I, and I know that there was, I know Kevin Williamson played around with the idea with Stu and Scream 3, I think it was, or something like that, or whatever the case was. Um, I, I, I know that it's never been completely off the table, but as Tony said, and he's right, you've got to be so careful because the question becomes, is it worth the risk? And that's what fans have to ask themselves is that on paper at face value, Stu MacArthur, Matthew Lillard back. Okay, great. Yes. That like as a billboard on the fucking highway. Yes, that that's, that's great. And that, yeah, okay, sure. But do you trust them to all you scream fans out there? Do you trust them to do it right? And if Only the question, right. it. And it, well, uh, who knows? And if the, right. be, be, because he's not writing part exactly. seven, he's directing it. Now that doesn't mean that he won't have influence. He is one of the creators of Scream and maybe, you know, he's able to add his two cents and he's able to, you know, I mean, I'm sure he, he, he will likely have a say and be asked, um, but he's not the writer. And so, but the question comes down to, even with Kevin, I mean, it's probably worth the risk then because it's him, but it's not. So do you trust that they're going to do Stu right if they were to bring him back? And so that's always been my apprehension. Is it, is it worth the risk? In my mind, the answer is no. Um, and I think the Scream films at this point are, I mean, most slasher sequels are diminishing returns, but certainly, and to be all, I mean, you know, you have to give credit work, you know, credit is due. If Scream 3, which the general consensus is that Scream 3 is the least liked, you know, is the quote unquote worst in the franchise. If Scream 3 is the worst in a franchise, you're doing pretty good. Uh, yeah. because Scream 3, most, I mean, Halloween, Friday the 13th, they would love to have the quality of a Scream 3 as their worst. Okay, let's just put it that way. Um, but nonetheless, it is, as much as I liked 5, and I didn't, you know, I, I thought 6 was serviceable, it is the same thing over and over again. And so that's why I had hoped that Scream 6, that they would actually yeah, end on it. You're right, because in, in rewatching 5, you know, you're you're spot on with that because it is a really good sequel. Like I remember when I watched it the other night, I'm like, this is a fucking good movie. Like yeah, it's, well, it's familiar. It's, it's enjoyable. Yeah. You know, like it, yeah. And you're right. They're hitting the notes. They're hitting the familiarity. It's, beats. it's, it's the force awakens of the scream franchise. And that was intentional very much like what, and I, we, we can sit here and you can hate, I say you, you know, people out there, ah, force awakens, just a carbon copy. they, they delivered something familiar, something very Star Warsy, something to 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 earn the trust from fans, and because Star Wars was dead, so you look at the yeah. same thing here with Scream. Wes Craven had died, and so what Radio Silence had to do was to deliver a familiar film 
to prove that they can make a Scream movie. Not a carbon copy, but something that, yeah, feels a little familiar. Maybe we've seen a little bit of this before, but there's enough new in there. There was enough new in The Force Awakens as well. Uh, certainly, you know, there was some, there, there was some retreads, um, but like Scream 5, there was some retreads, um, but it was enough familiar new uh, that people were like, this is actually pretty good, and now they've earned the trust from Scream fans. And so then people were excited for 6 and 6, you know, it is what it is. But um, And look, let's not get it twisted. I know there's a lot of big, uh, 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 especially with the younger gener uh, generation of Scream fans who really do enjoy Six, and I get it. That it it it's, it 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 really is written for them. I mean, if you really want to step back and look at it, it is a movie that is definitely catered to the new Scream fans, the the younger fans. Um, you know, yes, you've got you know Courtney in there as a legacy character, but oh, and Hayden as well too. But overall, when when you when you watch the tonality of the of that movie and the the, the character arcs of each of the 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 actors in the film, it's definitely pushing towards a younger audience. Well, sure it know? is. Yeah. Um, no, for and, sure. that, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. No, I think that's probably why I don't connect with scream six, uh, as much. It's just because I, you know, like I get it. I get it. I need, well, I need, I need my nev. And know? here's, like, and here's what I think they should do. This is what I think they should do, but I guarantee you this is not what they're going to do. <laughs> they're not going to do this because... They never do what we say we're going to do. Well, no, right? and, and they're, they're not going to do this by the sheer fact of this is not how you, you know, it, it's not good business. <laughs> but it's, it's, it, it, it may not be good business, but it's better for the, the, the franchise. It's better for the story arcs. It's better for the characters. I'm somebody that believes every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the, the, the slasher subgenre of horror, for whatever reason, has a beginning, a middle, and 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 no one wants to fucking end anything. And I get that. You end something, and then they fake end it. Oh, no, we're going to kind of end it. Oh, but it does really well because it's an ending, and we market to the ending, and everybody gets their ass. Let's make more! Ah! Final chapter, Friday the 13th, new beginning. And it's just like, fuck, you know what I mean? And I'm just, you know, I don't know if it's- we're going to come back with a reboot and start a new television Right, 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 exactly. So, and I think, to be fair and not to sound condescending when I say this, but I think it, 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 you know, age helps in that as you get older, you get more tired and you're just like, Oh, for fuck's sakes, just stop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you realize there's value in things ending. It's not that stories end. It's not that characters die or characters finish their arc. They don't have to die. They can just finish their arc. It's how they do it. You can do it with wonderful emotion and go out on top, right? The last thing you want, it's like, you know, you can say what you want about Seinfeld, but Jerry Seinfeld said, listen, we're the number one show, you know, in America right now. I've just been offered, he was offered like 20 million to, to do, or, or, or was it even more than that? I forget what it was. It was a boatload of money to come back and do a 10th season. He said, no, I'm good. Because he says, I don't want to get to the point where people fucking hate us and we're, and we're being canceled because we now Overstay suck. Our welcome. Right, exactly, exactly. So here's what I think they should do, but I don't think they're going to do it. Um, I'm actually, fa and again, it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm against the idea of Stu, but just for this scenario, I'm going to be for it. And so here's the thing. So Scream 5 and Scream 6, Melissa Barra, Barrera, excuse me, was fired. Okay. All right. Put that aside. She was fired. So she's not in Scream 7, as far as we know. So we're going to go on the basis that she's not in Scream 7. And neither is Tara. Because we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. No, we don't. It, we hey, no, listen, and fast. For fans to be assumption, assuming and attacking Nev, and like, I think it's absurd. Like, well, how well, that's, people get with it. Well, you know? that's it's it's because you've got a lot of. I could say some things here that would get me canceled, but you know, you got a lot of people, people out there. A lot of time on their hands. Yeah, that too. <laughs> and, uh, but it's okay. So you have Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega for two completely different reasons. The stars of Scream 5 and 6 are not going to be in Scream 7, as far as we know. Okay, that's, that's how it is right now. Fast forward six weeks from now, that might be different, but that's how it is right now. Okay, so I've said this on my channel before, and I'll say it again, that when you watch Scream 6, the ending of Scream 6 is, could now, could you continue it? Well, of course you could. Yes, you can continue anything in horror. Um, but Sam, her arc is complete. There's a moment at the end of that movie 
when she's got her father's ghost face mask in her hand. And Tara is walking away saying, come on, let's go. And she's looking at the mask. Now, the symbolism and cinematic language around this scene is terrific. And what does she do? She drops the mask on the ground and makes the choice to go with her sister without it. So what is that symbolizing? What is that telling us? She is leaving the past behind. She is done. She is going with her sister to a new, to wherever. They're going to go off. They're going to go a new life, college, university. She may never and likely will never run into Ghostface ever again. There's no reason for her to, now, could you figure out ways? But Dave, you can, of course you could. This is horror movies. You could figure out anything for God's sakes. I'm just saying that if you wanted to leave it there, I don't think there's any Scream fans. Now, I'm not the world's biggest Scream fan, so you scream nutballs out there, and I say that with affection because I'm a Halloween nutball. You scream nutballs out there, maybe you were able to see some, you know, nuances that I'm not seeing. But I don't think if they were to leave Tara and Sam's story in terms of the characters. Now, I know you love Melissa Brera, and she's great. She was great. I, I, I great. Sure. Who doesn't want to see them back? Okay, great. But in terms of the characters and story, if you were to leave the story there and that was it, we never saw Sam or Tara again. Mm -hmm. I don't feel having watched five and six being introduced to them and the ending of, of, of six feeling like there's any loose ends. I don't feel like, uh, but what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? She was going to do this. I don't feel like there's any thing to, I, I feel like, no, she made her choice because it would have been different if she had held the mask in her hand and she's looking down her hands are bloody, right? The dry blood on her hands, the cracked ghost face masks, or that's Billy's, that, that, that's her father's. She's holding her hands and Tara says, come on, let's go. It would have been different if she looks up and goes, okay. And she takes the mask with her. Just those two different choices, dropping the mask and leaving it behind or taking the mask with her symbolize two completely different things. But she doesn't. She drops the mask, leaves the past behind. Fuck him. Fuck my father. Fuck that nonsense. Fuck that shit. I'm going off to live my best life. Done. Done. We don't need to ever see them again from a story perspective is what I'm saying, right? I mean, obviously, of course, you know, <laughs> I, I get it. So to your point, Tony, you're right. I mean, you, you, you can leave the Tara and Sam universe that you've built with these two movies. Maybe you'll come back to it. Maybe you won't, but you can, I don't feel like by doing Scream 7 without them, oh, but hang on a sec. Uh, Tara was frozen in carbonite and 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 Sam, you know, well, lost look, her hand. I mean, and, the, and, the, two, the, the two actresses are so young. I mean, you can go a decade and they can still come back. Of course you, time. of course you could. But from a story perspective, it's like the Empire Strikes Back. If they had done the Empire Strikes Back and then Return of the Jedi was a completely different thing, we'd all be sitting there going, but, 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 but what about but, 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 but what about but, but, you know what I'm saying I don't feel like there's any loose ends with Scream 6 I'm sure you could probably think of something but that moment dropping it and leaving that's great she's gone off she's done there they are walking off into the distance you, you know you uh, you um, you know you uh, uh, tilt down you see the mask great done so I agree with you. You can leave that over here. Just leave it there. You know, let it cook for a while, whatever. But, you know, just leave it on simmer. Maybe it's done. Maybe it's not. Uh, you bring back Nev Campbell. Okay. I like your idea with keeping it small. Now, what about this? They're never going to do this. <laughs> They're never going to do this. It's unfortunate. You Scream fans can let me know what you think. Um, it's... The central location, the central plot of this movie is Nev Campbell is away with her family uh, or she she's away somewhere or there's there's some sort of situation that gets her isolated in like, you know, a cabin in the woods or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe it's up north somewhere, you know, maybe it's Big Bear in California or I don't know, like somewhere where there's a cabin she's getting away for a bit or something. Maybe it's her and the kids. Maybe it's not because you don't want to, you know, I don't know, but there's some, it, it has to be properly motivated, totally justified, but she's gone away either by herself or with some, maybe some friends, you know what I mean? Maybe it's a girl's weekend or something. 
And she goes away and she's in a cabin in the woods alone. There's some snow on the ground, right? I don't mean it's like a blizzard, but there's some snow and it's kind of a different setting for a Scream film we haven't seen before. And I agree with you. Opening the movie, opening the movie totally with Courtney Cox, Gail Weathers. You open with her 100% and she's the one that gets done, done. Off, done. Whoa. Like you know, there is oh, no, no, no she's coming dead. back. She no, no. is dead, dead. Like that's it. It's Dewey kind of dead. Hundred <laughs> percent. She is dead. Hundred percent. And this ghost face is standing over her and just looking down at her. And there's something about this. I know there's always that. There's something about this one. I mean, they all look the same. How can you, you know? But there is. There's something different here. There's something. I don't know what it is. Maybe it really is visceral. And and I mean, like you go there. And, and I mean, well, I know this. That's why something Stu, Stu is the killer. Yes. The, well, that, that's, I'm getting to that. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I'm getting to that. And, and maybe you go there, like you see her head. I'm not talking about terrifier shit. I'm just saying that, you know, there's cutaways. I do it with cuts. I do it with editing. But you see Ghostface grab the back of her head. She's got blood all over her face. You see him like slam her head into a table a couple of times. And you're sitting there and you're going, whoa, this isn't your, this this is not, this is not your teeny bopper scream movie. You know what I'm and saying? Let's not forget rewatch Drew Barrymore's kill scene in the first screen. That's pretty brutal. Oh, it is. I mean, it she, is. She gets it. You know, yep. I mean her intestines are basically hanging out. That's by the true. End, That's true. She's hanging in the tree. I mean, so um yeah, well, West, didn't pull, West didn't pull any punches on no. Drew Barrymore's death, which is what shocked us all. I re, I still remember. Yeah. That's probably my most genuine Holy fuck. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and the fact the that theater. it was America's sweetheart, Drew Barrymore, yeah, well, right? I mean, was, nobody expected it. She was a huge star. The, Nev Campbell wasn't a huge star. Poster in, in my closet there. Yeah. But she's like, she's the, she was advertised as, you know, like, this is who we're going to see, you know, Drew Barrymore and Scream. Yeah. Like, Nev Campbell was only on Party of Five, so she had only, she was just building that momentum. That's correct. Herself. That's so correct. nobody saw that coming. At nobody the expected of the film. it. And so, but but just a very intense kill of Gail Weathers almost feels. It, I I got to admit, and yeah, it's supposed to feel this way. It's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. Scream fans. And it kind of no makes. Rips, rips off his nope. mask and you see it's Stu. No, 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 not there. Not there. It would be later when he goes after Nev. And he's hunting down Nev. And he he finds her. It's, you know, it's isolated, secluded in like this cabin in the woods or whatever the case is. And he goes after, he finds her there. Again, the writers would figure out how that, you know, that's the case and why he is out where he's been for the last 25 years. All that has to be uh, fleshed yeah, out, justified. Of like I was in some mental hospital or some like great. Like, well, no, it, it's God, no. I, I'm just saying it's that's the <laughs> trick, right? That's the trick. But keeping it small and isolated to you know, and and I don't mean a rinky dink ca you know cabin. I mean it can be a home for goodness sakes. It can be a nice wooden home in the woods or something that has a lot of character, so you can you know build upon that character and that mood and that atmosphere. But he's not going. It's it's personal. He's not going after anybody else. He's not going after, he's, he's got one mission and one mission only to kill yeah. Sidney Prescott. It's so personal, there's, like it's personal. Said. So there's no, there's no like news reports of like other people other than Gail Weathers being killed. There's no, no two. Th no, there's no two. Him. That's right. I was just going to get to that. So there's no, it's just him other than Gail. There's no like other deaths you know, because these other killers are just really hip on horror movies. Nope, none of that. It's one death in the opening. It feels, this time, it really does feel different. That's not, that's not a mark. It's not just a marketing line. This time, it's different. No, no, no. This time, it is different. And you can feel it when you watch it. From the opening, at the end of the opening kill, you go, wow. That death felt, that made me uncomfortable. I don't mean gross. I don't mean blood, guts, and gore. I don't mean you see everything. Just of how violent it was to one of your beloved legacy characters. Not to the point of being disrespectful, but just to that point where you're like, oh, wow, shit just got real.
this really is different. There really is something different here. And it is personal. He doesn't have any desire to go off and start killing people around town. He doesn't give a fuck about that. He's been there. No, I mean, you are going to have a, you're going to have a few bodies, obviously. Well, you have a few bodies that are collateral damage by the process of maybe being with Nev at the cabin or at the house, but there's no bodies necessarily that he's like, He's not going to, yeah, to we're not Gail's going after high school kids. No, like, this is sh- no, exactly. You know, and yeah. he's not going to Gail's next door neighbor. Right. I mean, he's not going on like this murder spree around town. Why? It's 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 irrelevant. It's it's uh, 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 superfluous. I mean, there, there's no there's no reason for him to go and do that. Right. And so because there's a reason for him to kill to kill Gail. And the big reveal eventually comes later uh, when she's trapped and maybe she's alone and some of her friends have been killed or whatever the case is. Like I said, I'm not talking about a rinky dink cabin in the woods like, you know, Friday the 13th. It could be like just like a nice home, like a real nice home. Maybe it's hers. Maybe it's hers. Who who knows who her husband is? Maybe it's hers that, you know, she's a uh, babe. I just need to get, oh, don't worry about it, babe. I'll take care of the kids. You take Marcy and Susie and Grace and go up to the, whatever the case is. It doesn't, it's not fucking shit. Shakespeare, you you come up with something that makes sense, so the audience goes, yeah, okay, I buy that. You know, it doesn't have to be this, oh, cool. no, no, it's fine. This goes up, whatever the case is, get her there, make sure it's properly motivated, make sure it makes sense, and shit begins to go down. It's a small, it's like hush, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the vein of that kind of thing where there's, a, uh, you know, you're isolated, there's different, you know, hallways and basements, and 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 maybe there's like a, a, a shed out the back, or there's another little kind of shanty out there you know there's you got got the woods at nighttime you got like i mean there's other shit you can do but you're isolated right you're not close to the police even if you were to call the police it might take them 15 20 minutes to get there because you know you're in the country you're up wherever you are right you isolate her so it's just her and Stu, nobody's around anymore hello sydney you know what i'm saying and it's just them and it is the final showdown the showdown to end it all you know what i'm saying and of course that would never happen because this would make like you know a ton of money if they, and they'd make more and but i'm just the saying the only thing the only thing i the only thing i could see them probably not doing is waiting to review reveal Stu. i think they probably if if they played it out the way you did knowing the the fan base and knowing that the fans would be super excited to see Stu back i think in the opening kill sequence I think they would reveal Stu. Well, like, I, I think, think I you think could. Stu would take the mask off, and he would, you know, you know, and Gail would be shocked to see that it's Stu, you know. And I think the fans would appreciate that he gets his kill, and then you build up that, you know, that momentum to, you, you know, you totally, you totally could do it that way, uh, you know. But you could also, you could also, if you wanted to do it my way, you could also not hide the fact that. Matthew Lillard is in the movie. I mean, he's on the cast list. He's in IMDb. It says he's playing Stu. You know, so like the 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 fans can know consciously going into the movie. Oh, he's the ghost, ghost face is Stu. Yeah. But to delay that gratification of seeing his face as Stu for the first time in 25 years, longer than that now, nearly 30 years, for the first time in seeing his face, you can maybe delay that gratification, you know, so it's the roller coaster going up, 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 you know, until sort of, I don't mean like the very end, end of the movie, but I mean like the beginning of the third act. Is the other thing they could do is as you're building this momentum, you know, we, the audience know it's Stu, Sydney doesn't know it's Stu yet. Right. And may- oh, yeah, that's right. Maybe he shuts off the voice electronic and starts talking himself. Yeah. Yes. And Sydney's like, wait, what? You yes. Know, it's, it's hearing Stu's voice for the first time, realizing it's Stu. And right. Then, you know, that that could be another way of going about reveal revealing uh, Stu uh-huh. would be to switch off the iconic voice, you know, uh, ghost face mask or voice. Um, yep. and he starts talking normally and Sydney's like, she recognizes the voice, but like, because it's been so long, she's not a hundred percent sure until he starts going on, you know, right. starts, 
you know, and then right. she's starting to realize like, oh shit, this is Stu. Yeah. 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 No, I mean that, that would be really cool. Cause that's never been done before. Right in the middle of a, of a, you know, hello, Sandy. It just turns it off and you're just it like, Hey, what's going on? Killing someone that she knows. And, could be that too. You know, she's going off and you know, she hears the screams of the victim and then he shuts off the voice modulator and starts talking himself. And yeah. you know, that's when shit starts hitting the fan. Yeah. Like, oh, but shit. it's very, it's a, it's a, it's a no holds barred, very direct, with a very specific creative vision. Who kills her at the end. But I'm <laughs> and hey! No, no. Hey, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Both die. Oh, but it's a it's a, it's 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 a very specific, direct creative vision. Uh there's not a lot of, you know, fluff. There's not a lot and of it's nonsense. Like a direct sequel to the original without being a direct sequel to the original. And yep. it doesn't retcon. Nope. Anything you don't nothing anything up nothing at all it just no we don't, we nothing don't go at all Jamie Lee Curtis on this no. okay everything stays intact but this is about this is about what this really is about and listen you know at the end of Scream Five there was a passing of the torch uh, you know Sam said am I going to be okay and Sidney Prescott said dramatic pause eventually and I know that might not be the send off that a lot of people uh f you know fans would want but it is that the symbolism in that 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 exchange uh is the wiser you know warrior telling the new warrior that you're going to be okay right. you know i've been through this you know you're going to be through you know it's it's like a it's like an a, 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 a former heavyweight champion teaching a young up and coming champion you know what i mean and teaching them the wise ways of the force or you know whatever the case is i mean that's what that is am i going to be okay eventually i love that and that's it i mean sydney came back she i mean they rebuilt the interior of, of Stu's house they were in there so there was that nostalgia she came back she fought she won whatever the case is and so Although it might not be the ending that fans want, uh, it, it it doesn't leave any loose ends. I, I don't feel narratively, no, oh, but nice. Sydney and what about all this Please. kind of stuff? Not all. Because, because too, why would Sydney come back? I mean, you know, at this point in the game, at this point in the game, I do not believe that she would come back into the fold because Sam needed well, her or I'm Tara saying, needed bro. her. Like, so what motive, could, what ghost face motive could that's you my do point now to Sydney that hasn't been done. And that's exactly like we said earlier, you know, the Roman one with her brother didn't land with audience. Okay. Two is okay. I mean, it's Billy Loomis's mom. So we get it. All right. She's on a revenge thing. She's going after Sydney for killing her son. I, all right. I, I can buy into that. The fourth one I buy into the most because it's the jealous cousin who wants the popularity. She wants to be famous like her cousin. That I totally buy into. Sure. Five is more of like, okay, we're going to basically recycle exactly what we did in the first one. Familiar beats, you know, we're going to pay homage to the original and this is it. Okay, yeah. it worked and that's it. Yeah. What do you do now? You know, like, well, like and the, what would and be the person's motive at this point to go after Sydney? Because at this point then, I, I'm going to start to think Sydney's a real fucked up person because a lot of people want to kill this girl. Well, and here's the thing too, again, for those of you that are just joining, I know that I've been very much against the idea of Stu coming back, and I still am because I don't believe that they would necessarily do it correct. And obviously, like Tony, I don't want it to undermine and water down uh, the character from the original. However, here's the catch. Here's the real catch. The premise that I just basically described to you, and again, it would need fleshing out and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just a basic premise. Um, but that premise would only be something that, and this is the problem because it's show business, would only be something that I would want to do if there was real intention. I mean, actually, not not fake Friday the 13th, the final chapter, Friday the 13th, the new, not, not, not fake, ah, oh, gotcha, no, it's not really the last one. Um, I mean, actually end it all. Like what they're doing with Halloween ends. And you could say, oh, but there's a TV series. Yes, but it's not connected to the David Gordon Green trilogy. Michael Myers actually died in that movie. We can hate the movie all we want. We can think it's a piece of shit all we want. But Michael Myers died in that movie. They pulled the trigger. So they can't make a sequel to Halloween ends with Michael Myers because it would make no fucking sense. Because nice. he was- Grind it up. He got grinded. <laughs> they actually pulled. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about here. 
the he problem did. he did the, the problem is that Ghostface is many people and not just one but nonetheless if you were going to do what I presented um Stu if it's done right if it's done right famous last words it can be it can be your ace card mm -hmm. but you don't want to play your ace card too early you don't want to play it and then allow the game to go on right you play your ace card to do what to end it all to go fuck that boom end. i win you know what I'm saying? That's when you play that ace. And it can be a literal ace or it can be something else. I mean, the ace card is a, you know, is a term, right? But it can be, but it's that, it's that, it's that secret, that, that secret thing you've got up your sleeve. And you only ever play that to end it all, right? You know, whatever the situation is. And so if you were to play the stew card, it would feel weird to have a, a terrific battle between Sydney and Stu, or whatever the case is, the 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 Lori and Michael of Scream. And then you're just making, and, and let's say Stu actually does die, or maybe Sydney and Stu both die or something. I don't know, right? It's this epic thing to the death. But then you go on and continue to make more Scream movies? Like, it feels like you've just, it feels very anticlimactic now, right? Like, you know, it feels like this should be the story, however you want to tell it, that you tell it to end it all. It is the final chapter. There will be no more because you can't reach the heights ever again, necessarily, with that level of epicness, Stu and Sydney. I mean, where do you go? It's all downhill from there. No matter how I mean, good the Scream movies are, it won't, I don't, who knows so if it would ever match the heights of of that unless you were to somehow just continue on with sam and tara well, which well, makes no sense that. because i feel they're done or if you know if nev campbell isn't quite ready to hang up her hat as the character you could she comes ghost back as ghostface well you could keep Stu alive as ghostface for a, a sequel you've never seen we've talked about that before that we've oh, never yeah. seen ghostface actually survive Right. So you could, at the end of seven here, you could definitely, it is very clear that he ain't dead and there's more. Yes, you, know you would mean? just like, be delaying the inevitable, right? right. You would be, you, which, which is not a bad idea because I said before Scream 6 came out, something I've always wanted to see, and I understand that it, it doesn't ruin the whodunit. Every Scream movie ends with the Scooby-Doo moment. <laughs> <laughs> ruh -ruh. It ends with the mask coming off. You figure out who they are. The killers spend the next two or three minutes telling you why they're so evil. And then eventually, you know, they die. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a whodunit movie. And at the end of whodunit movies, you got to know who, who did it, who done it. But maybe you play with the formula a bit. And I, I had hoped that Scream 6 was going to end on a cliffhanger with something we've never seen before. You want to say that, Scream, that this Scream movie's like something you've never seen before? Well, oh, deliver! They would be in a real fucking predicament right now I, if that were the case. I'd, well, yes, right now they would. Yes, that's true. But they had no idea of knowing that. But oh. I wanted it to end, and you could still do it with this idea, like you said, maybe you end it with Ghostface looking over Nev. She's down and out. She's bloody. She's beaten. We've never seen this before. The audience is looking at their watch and they're going, wait a minute, we don't have time for the Scooby-Doo moment. This movie's only and an he, hour and, and 15 minutes just, and we're already at an hour and 10 minutes. What's going on? He, he wipes the blade and he's like, not yet. <laughs> yeah, well, no, he doesn't have to say anything. I'm fucking with her mentally. Yeah, he doesn't have to say anything. He just looks down, and, you know, there's this great crescendo that's building with the music, you know, and they're looking up at him, you know, or she's looking up at him, the camera's looking at, there's this power shot, this high angle, so you give this sense of authority and power, and he's just looking down, maybe some blood on the ghost face mask, he's looking down, cut to black roll credits. What the fuck? We've never, that's something we've never seen before. But, of course, the idea is, well, it's like a two-parter kind of thing. You don't call it, uh, you know two-parter you know the title but narratively that's, that's your idea. idea it's planned out that way so then you go on to scream eight right you know what i mean and then it sort of wraps it all up so yeah to your point you could do that um but i feel that if you're gonna bring Stu back that's your ace in the hole if it's done right it and and you're gonna have a battle between Stu and sydney where do you, once that's done, whether it's done in one movie or two movies or whatever the case is, once that battle is wrapped up, where do you go? 
There's like, I mean, no worry. I mean, there's no like, I mean, because like I said, it starts to get ridiculous. You start feeling like, are this many people pissed off at Sydney? You know what I mean? Because you yeah. start getting to like, you know, like, okay, I got the brother angle. I got the, you know, like I said, not to go through the sequels again, but you know, we've seen everything that has made sense as far as a story, as a, as a narrative goes. Now you're just going to be reaching and it's just gonna be like, well, none of this shit makes sense. It's just someone copying what Billy did or, yeah. you know, whatever. I mean, like it just it, it's it's making a movie just to make a movie that's not necessary. So that's why, you know, whatever Nev's plan is, you know, and if their plan is to maybe bring Stu back, it is the one that makes sense the most. But it's got to be treated so delicately. Like, I don't I, I just my thing is I don't trust 2024 script writing. In storytelling i just mm. i don't i don't trust it there's there uh, there are uh there are good movies and then there are a lot of bad movies you right. know what i mean there yep. are definitely a handful of great movies that come out over the course of the year that i'm like oh, that was really fucking good well and, you know, and then there's a lot of movies that i'm just like no well and <laughs> like, and look no. uh you know two things and and as 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 uh, consistent as the Scream movies have been in terms of quality. Like I said, when Scream 3 is your worst in the franchise, you're doing pretty good. Uh, it's inevitable. Well, yeah, even for me, I can watch four of the six movies and be totally fine with of, it. Of course. That's, you're still going, that's still, you're, you're over 500, so you're good. You are, but, but, but even still, it's inevitable. Right. The longer you go on, eventually... There's going to be that one where you go, and there it is, right? And so you have to be very careful. The other thing is too, if they were to take this approach, which they're never going to do, unfortunately, but if they did, hypothetically, and they went the route that we've been talking about here, right? Whether it's one movie, two movies, you know, um, cliffhanger, like whatever the case is, you don't have to worry about Sam and Tara, because like I said, at the end of Scream 6, it is wrapped up. I mean, she drops the mask on the ground and walks off with her sister. There's no loose ends with Tara. Yes, you can continue with Tara, of course. Uh, and, and and Sam. And whatever they but, wanted to do, they could still go back to that and do that. There's they, no, no one says they can't do that. They totally can. They can, but you don't have to and feel like you're leaving something on the table is what I'm saying, right? Because that story, again, when Sam drops that mask on the ground, she's made the choice. She's made the choice to leave the past behind. That's what that means, folks. That's good writing. She's dropped the mask on the ground. She's leaving it behind. She's walking away. Where is the mask? It's behind her. It's in the past. She's walking into the future with her sister. It's over. We never need to see Sam and Tara again. Of course, it would be great. You fall in love with them. They're great. They're new characters. They're the future of the franchise. They're fun. They're, you know, they're hot new actresses right now. And, and you know, I get all that. But narratively, there's nothing that I feel like, oh, but what about Bob? And what about this? And what about, no, it, it's wrapped up. She made her choice. So like you said, they could continue on, but if they didn't want to, they don't have to. Everything's been wrapped up. The Sam and Tara story has been wrapped up and Nev has been, like it's, it's all been wrapped up. You're good. It's over. Take your seven films and make a box set and call it a day. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyways, man, what a discussion. We could go on and on on this. Um, but I can't because I actually have work to do. So that's let's true. Let's jump over to the uh, chat room and see what you were all saying now. I know some super chats did come in. So let me see if I can uh, grab some of these uh, super chats here. Uh, where are we? There we are. And get some of these super chats, which did come in. Uh, the first super chat came in from uh, Cody Snyder sent in a member chat and says, oh yeah, baby, two dudes back in the house. Thank you, Cody. Lee the Machine Bowers, ladies and gentlemen, going hard into the paint with a $49.99 super chat. Thank you, Lee. And just says, we are live. The boys are back. Thank you, Lee. 
Excuse me, really, really appreciate that. Josh McKenna sends in $1.99 and says, two dudes are back. This is Gail Weathers signing off. Uh, that's right. She should say that when she dies. Um, Josh McKenna sends in $1.99. Like it, it, it probably would be. Uh, sends another $1.99 and says, what type of music and bands do you guys like? Well, we've kind of talked about this before, Josh. I know uh, for me, I, I'll, I'll listen to anything and everything. My favorite band is ACDC. And Tony, you're, I think you, you're into, I'm all, all over the map. I mean, I, 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 I'm in a whole country music phase right now. Um, mm. I mean, I've always loved country music, but definitely hitting it hard with country music lately. Um, but you know, the shit we grew up with in the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, uh, anything rock related, pop, you know, um, hip hop, R and B, whatever. Um, there's not like one specific genre of music. It's just more of like whatever I'm feeling. I mean, shit, I can even go back to our parents, you know, listen to the music from the fifties and sixties. Oh, I do all the time. You That's know, so it just, it just, whatever I'm in the mood for, you know, but lately it's been heavy country music. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. Uh, and then we've got, uh, Kratos war sends in a dollar 99 says, welcome back guys. Glad I could catch you all y'all live. Well, I'm glad you could catch us live, my man. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, Kings hockey sends in a very generous super chat at $20. Thanks buddy. He says to go into a new direction for scream seven. How about family members of all the past killers are being murdered. There would be a plethora of suspects. Maybe Sid is being framed anyway just an idea thoughts um yeah it's not bad uh my first thought would be i mean as a premise it sounds interesting uh i would just need to know who is how are you going to all wrap it up right like what is how how are you going to make sense of it all and uh and is it strong uh, is it a, a real like, oh, that's really good. Like the premise sounds interesting. Ooh, all the past killers are, you know, the family members are being killed, but who is doing the killing and, and why at the end of the day? It's got to be ironclad, but yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, live to Fish Rourke sends in $10. Thank you, buddy. This is his first super chat. Says, uh, Nev was my first crush. My wife hates her just because she's been my favorite. Not just Sydney. I love all of Nev's work from Party of Five to current day. She does. Uh, she she does love Jennifer Love Hewitt, though. Your wife, you mean, I'm assuming. Uh, I'm sure Nev does, too. Uh, yeah, I was a big, uh, I was a big uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt uh, uh, sure. fan. Hey, did I hear that her and Freddie Prince are doing a, another I Know? Uh, it is currently in development. So are they, or are they not? Uh, I think they, I suspect that they will be back. Yes. I suspect that they will be back. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, entertainment wizard. Oh no, they're talking amongst each other. That's good. Just trying to see if there's any other scream stuff. Um, Zach Axiola says, uh, Dave, do you think there's a way going full throttle with the with that idea of a copycat killer could work in a, oh, in a Halloween film uh, while also still keeping enough focus on Michael? Uh, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Well, I, I want to focus the chat on Scream here at the moment, so uh, I'm not entirely sure going forward, but it's always possible. It's always possible. Davy Deathray says, that filter in Scream 4 isn't on every shot. Honestly, I didn't even notice it until I saw it brought up online. Scream 4 is my favorite sequel in the series. Uh, probably, I would assume, something to do with the color grading of, of, of 4. Oh, Okay. Probably. Maybe there's like a, a I don't know, maybe like a it is, over it's, it? it's very... Uh, is it warm? No. Is it warm? It, it's very... Uh, when you look at the first three and then you get to four, it's, it's, there's definitely a, 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 a little bit more of a rich contrast right. to the film. I will definitely agree with that when, you know, it, only because the movies are so fresh in my mind right, right. now. Just watching them. Like a little um, more saturated yeah. maybe? Not, yes, but just more contrast. You know, mm. everything's more rich. Right. That's the word. It's more rich. More rich. Uh, the colors pop you more. Know, everything is just, you know, like, we, especially because when you look at the first three, there's definitely a, a, a tone. You know what I mean? Right. Um, because even when you look at five, five doesn't have the same aesthetic look as the first ones. Right. You know what I mean? The first three. Uh, but yeah, I, I get what they're saying as far as uh, whatever they did to four on the post-production. Yeah, it's it's a little bit different. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Live to Fish Rourke sends in a $10 again. Thanks, buddy. Says, I've been a fan since early 2017. Dave, you've been my inspiration, and I finally started my own little horror channel and made a video talking about my seven-year journey with Dave McRae. Oh, very cool, my man. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad I, I've been able to uh, inspire you from from the shadows, my man, and and uh, I wish you the best of luck on your on your YouTube YouTube journey and uh yeah man thanks for thanks for sharing that and thank you for supporting the channel i really appreciate that um yeah i hope uh i hope you have great success with your channel and uh stick it's a lot with of it. yeah that's well that's just it you gotta you gotta stick with it it's a lot of hard work um but as long as you stick with it and and uh you know you should you should see some some success for sure um uh, bah, 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 bing, bah, bah, bah. Brian Mean says, when did Dave start his channel? I remember finding him after Halloween 2028. 20, you mean Halloween 18. Um, well, I've had this YouTube channel since 2006. So I've actually had it for nearly 20 years. I, I, and you were posting a lot of your short fan films. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I made like little amateur Halloween fan films where I ran around and my fucking Michael Myers gosh it was just basic kind of stuff but it was that's a lot of fun that's what YouTube was back then that, too, that's you know? I was just nobody gonna nobody was doing reviews and shit like 100%, that that's you know? exactly what it was back then it was cat videos and in the horror space it was people running around their houses and their fucking costumes just having fun just having fun and so uh, but I never I didn't start to do this this kind of thing put my opinions out there probably until 2017 is when I began to. I thought it was 2016 when we started. Uh, sure. It was 2017. I thought it was, two, I thought it was about a. I thought it was late 2016 when we started, like late in the fall. No, for I remember me, doing. For me, my first one where I started talking about Halloween was May 2017. It was 2016 when the news came out that Blumhouse had picked up the rights to Halloween. And then it was 2017 when they announced the return of John Carpenter. And then I believe it was September of 2017 when they announced the return of Jamie Lee Curtis. Okay. Cause I think I was doing YouTube. Well, you were probably myself. doing it that way before I was. Yeah, I think I was, I think I was, I, I, I when I had my channel, I was, I started somewhere around, I want to say late summer of 2016. Okay. And then you and I linked up within a year of that time frame. Right. Um, because then shortly after that, I decided like, yeah, I am not doing this anymore. <laughs> right. Right. Gotcha. 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 Um, all right. Well, let me see here. I think have we got all the super chats. I think we do. I think we did. I think we do. Uh, it's going to be a short show tonight uh, just because Tony's got some extra work he has to do. But as of right now, we are planning to come back this time next week uh, with another show. So uh, we'll definitely keep you posted on that. Um, but yeah, this was... Uh, oh, Oliver Mercer! Oliver Mercer sends in five pounds and says, regarding Stu being away so long, uh, is easy to me. He's been in prison for 28-odd years, Matthew uh, believes he survived. Would you entertain that, Dave and Tony? He was in prison. I, you know what? I mean, I mean, as much as it seems a little cliche, where else would he have been? I mean, where he else would he be? He, he's not supernatural like that, Michael why Myers. Wouldn't, why wouldn't Sydney know though that he survived? Well, that's just it. That's it. Too, that's right? again. That's the key. The, the key thing to all of this is it's got to be so believable because, as far as Sydney is concerned. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead, dead. You know, so you, 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 again, it's got to be believable to the fact that they kept it away from her as well, too. Right. All this time, you know, for, and, and again, to be believable, um, if he was incarcerated in prison, she would know that. And yeah. it would be, ta it, it, it would have, I'd be all over the least. news. There'd be a right. trial. It would have been, a, you know, at well, least maybe not a trial, once, but yeah, you know, or twice, you know, that he was still alive. It's it, so you got to, that how they bring him back, they got to be careful on that. Yeah. Yeah. They do. They do. I, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree with that. Uh, Lee the Machine Bauer sends in a member chat says, if they bring back Dewey, uh, and this time he ain't alone, Doofy. Doofy teams up with them. So Dewey and Doofy. Dewey and Doofy. Maybe sure. that's Scream 8. Maybe that's part eight. Uh, and then live to fish worked uh, $10 again. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Says Nev might be my girl, but I love my wife, Gina, so much. Well, <laughs> oh, just got to get that out there. Honey, listen. Honey, 
You just, just, you know, you got to get it out there. You, 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 you got to get it. All right, folks, listen, that is going to do it for this episode of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. Like I said, a short one tonight, uh, but don't worry. Don't worry. We'll be back with some longer ones. That's what she said. Uh, it was a great first show back. Tony, how'd you feel? It's good. Good to be back. To be I, think so the, uh, I think so, too. I think so, too. That's right. That's right. Live to fish. But Dave, thanks, buddy. Appreciate you supporting the channel. Folks, uh, jump into the comment section below if you're watching after the fact and let Tony and I know your thoughts on this whole news surrounding Nev Campbell and Scream 7, Kevin Williamson. We didn't even really talk about Kevin Williamson, but yeah, maybe that's you know for another show. But jump into the comment section and let us know your thoughts about everything we had to say here today. Taylor Paulson sends in a late one at the buzzer, says, you guys rock. So do you, Taylor. Thank you very much for that. And folks, we will uh, be back, back next week. Next week. That's right. I think I've got all the super chats, right? Right? Cody Snyder saying Dave super chats. Yeah, I think I've got them all. I think I've got them all. I don't think I've missed any. I've got them all. I've got them all. I've got, uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, 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 I've got them all. I've got them all. If I miss any, uh, we'll pick them up next week. Folks, have a great rest of your Monday. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.